What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back again with another video. So, you guys have requested that I check out how Adam would book Keith Lee. So, this is what I'm about to do for you guys. Appreciate all the love and support. Road to 70K. I am looking forward to how he would have booked Keith Lee. I'm willing to bet it would probably be or is going to be 10 times better than what WWE could have ever done. And that's a shame. That's all I'm going to say. I know Keith Lee uh, was dealing with some health issues at the beginning of his run, um, but they, there's still things they could have did to really expound on him being a main event player, you know, and it just sucks that they really didn't, like, go for that. They didn't capitalize on the momentum when they had the chance, and uh, it kind of sucks. So we're going to check this out. Appreciate all the love and support, and let's do this damn thing. Okay, so a few disclaimers before I start. This one's potentially going to be a little sassier than usual because it bears repeating, how'd you screw up Keith Lee? And so My sentiments exactly. How do you screw him up? I have no idea. Secondly, this booking is going to be pretty simple. A bit obvious in places, not a whole lot of earth-shattering invasion, NXT endgame pomp and circumstance going on. It's just going to be a fairly straightforward list of matches I'd like to see that all make sense. Because how do you screw up Someone tell Keith me. Lee? Someone he is tell history's me. most perfect man, you stupid! <laughs> Bastard! <laughs> what do you want from your professional wrestling main eventer? The guy has to be able to talk. Okay, how about a charismatic love child of Barry White in the world's sexiest bear whispering inspirational poetry at that you with a kind right. of eloquent baritone that gives you vibrations in your f***ing bone marrow and can make you feel like the only person in the room at a crowded <laughs> cocktail party? Do you want unique athleticism? Oh, TakeOver Portland would like to Fantastic talk to you match. about that where Keith Lee and Dominic Dijakovic put on one of the defining pork de soleil hoss crabatic displays of Fantastic big boys but match. quick boys doing things that beef Sunday shouldn't be able to do flips forward rolls moonsaults deadlift power bombs Keith Lee hurts in every flavor do you want someone with a good look look at him Look at him! The only human being to have ever made a beard, no mustache combination look. <laughs> the beard, no mustache combination. This is true. He made it work. He made it work. <laughs> Physically thrilling. It's like if the Vitruvian man wasn't such a little bitch. Like sexy Thanos. Like if scientists. Sexy Thanos. <laughs> he puts on the glove. I'll do it myself. <laughs> I'll save the WWE myself. Unfortunately, he didn't have the glove. Managed to distill both a tempest and a cuddle into one f***able king. He's so immediately physically impressive that WWE could just drop him into mainstream shows like, oh, I don't know, Survivor Series and the Royal Rumble. And people just knew he was mm -hmm. a big deal. Even Brock Lesnar f***ing knew. And he gives as yeah. much a sh about your favorite wrestling as about Heath Ledger's kids. <sighs> I just... Can we just acknowledge the fact that they did do this for Survivor Series when Keith Lee was about to enter the ring? People were excited. The same thing with the Royal Rumble. When Keith Lee entered the ring and Brock saw him, people got legitimately excited. I got goosebumps to see what this could really be on the main roster. And yet they still don't they don't capitalize on this. Just ridiculous. What part of this? This doesn't make sense. What part? I'm, I'm sorry. I, I really am. I feel uh, your pain. I'll, I'll calm myself we down. All do. And to do that, let's talk about our sponsor yeah. for this week, Surfshark VPN. Are you looking for a whole bunch of telly to watch to we'll make this worldwide? This. Allowing treats its employees like garbage and a run by your browsing history. Yeah, we'll skip through Ooh. this, skip through this. Four months. I promise I'm going to keep this brief, partially because it's a fresh wound, partially because it's so very sad indeed. It After is. rocking the typical big indies to make a major mark on pro wrestling, your Ring of Honors, your Evolves, your 
PWGs. Keith Lee arrived in NXT in August 2018 and admittedly, he didn't make a super immediate mark. He was injured fairly soon after his arrival. Plus 2018 was the year of Champion Gargano. Not many others were getting a look in. However, mm -hmm. from mid to late 2009, the rocket under Keith Lee was finally fueled and ready for launch. He pounced Adam Cole into the crowd in the great... One of the best memes. <laughs> that is such a fantastic meme, bro. Just launch this nigga into outer space, bro. Oh my God. This wrestling gif of the year. He was on the winning team at TakeOver mm -hmm. War Games, nearly pinned Roman goddamn reigns at Survivor yes. Series. To much acclaim was the NXT breakout star that year because nearly pinning Roman reigns at a big four pay per view yes. despite never appearing on the main roster is kind of the definition of a breakout That's star. A he won the North thing. American title from Roderick Strong. He blew Brock Lesnar's white sausage mind at the Rumble. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, big, big boy. boy. <laughs> Take over Portland against Djokovic became the first ever man to hold both North American and NXT championship. They, they were building him like the next guy up, bro. They were putting a rocket, like Adam said, and strapping it to him and sending him to the moon. Damn near past the moon. Just how they were booking him, how the crowd was receiving him on the main roster, and what happens. What ultimately is his fate in WWE? Absolutely fucking nothing. He got a couple of noticeable wins, but outside of that, where is he now? They let him go. Ships at the same time. He dropped the strap to Karrion Cross and debuted on the main roster on Raw on August 24th on my f birthday no less oh, the damn. greatest gift a boy should be able to ask for no. and he lost to randy orton via dq after drew mcintyre interference the bad things started to happen almost immediately they took his music away poor cfo money and replaced it with some generic loading screen featureless rock they made him wrestle in a shirt like a husky kid trying to cover himself up at the pool and barely allowed him to talk he beat randy orton clean at payback and to be fair the mm -hmm. whole company kind of really played that up to be a big deal so yeah good job they there. did then he missed clash of champions of, of course, why well, you don't want to cap you can't want to capitalize on beating Randy Orton. He was part of one of the weirdest booked male Survivor Series matches in recent memory where Raw beat SmackDown in a clean sweep. But hey, a win's a win, I mm -hmm. suppose. He didn't wrestle at TLC because, again, why would you want to capitalize on that? He didn't wrestle at the Royal Rumble, although that last one was because he was isolating after his partner Mia Yim caught COVID. He was booked to wrestle at Elimination Chamber, but then Lee himself actually caught COVID, mm -hmm. leading to heart inflammation that sidelined him from action for five months, nearly killed him and restricted him from doing anything more than, in his own words, a light jog. None of and that sucks. You know, all, you know, it, it sucks those unseen, unfortunate events happen to him. But at the same time, prior to that, they had opportunities to really go with his momentum. And, you know, there's things that just kept derailing him, which sucks. Because the more time you off TV... The less time, the more time people don't care about your character. You know what I'm saying? So it, it just, it just does. It, it was really unfortunate. But WWE still takes the blame in some of this for not utilizing him when he was healthy, when he was good. None of that, obviously, is WWE's fault. In fact, WWE took care of him. He got him several MRIs, even had him booked for genetic testing at one point. So, like, Fair enough there. Mm -hmm. Keith Lee finally returned in July, got fed to Bobby Lashley, repackaged as Keith Bearcat Lee, and we can blame WWE for that and for also this singlet. And for Keith Lee not being booked as important enough to wrestle on a single pay-per-view since his return. Until that the only sucks. major thing Keith Lee did since beating Randy Orton at Payback 2020 was almost have Adam Cole as his manager in a near miss example of how to mismanage two birds with one stone. Mm. Keith Lee was then released on November 4th and... That's it. Just... I, I was on holiday when they released him. That's it. F me, I guess. Let me have a go. Come on, you got this. I know he's gonna do a way better job. All right, so one thing to address right off the bat, the five months that Keith Lee was sidelined with COVID, I've got a choice here. I can treat it as unavoidable, which will make the booking a bit more of a thing that actually happened in real life, albeit really quite 
morbid and having it blow a big hole in whatever story I want to tell because I'm not going to book an angle where Keith Lee is written off TV because he caught an infectious disease. There's that approach and then there's just ignore it, which feels odd in its own way, ultimately makes this booking unrealistic and more just straightforward wish fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And ultimately to me, these bookings aren't really supposed to be completely realistic. They're an exercise in writing short stories, stories that I and hopefully other people would like to see that exist with the benefit of hindsight, conveniently ignoring backstage politics, accidents, the irrational choices of a man in his 70s who doesn't know what cool <laughs> is anymore and nor does his best Vince friend McMahon. Bruce. See, the clue is in the name, fantasy booking. <laughs> like, I'm, I've never hidden that part of these videos. Oh so I am just gonna ignore the COVID thing. If that makes you feel weird, it makes me feel a little weird too, and no disrespect to Keith Lee, but mm -hmm. anyway, there we go. So we're winding the clock back to my birthday, 2020, and the debut on Raw of Keith Lee. And by Keith Lee, I mean, who is he? Who's that champ I see? Rhetorical question, because we all know the answer, Keith Lee. His theme <laughs> tune from NXT, please, that everyone liked, and his topless tight pants combination, which I very much liked, and also objectively made him look bigger than containing him in a shirt and baggy shorts. Mm -hmm. Please don't fix what isn't broken. Thank please you. feel free now to leave a comment about how I'm a booking genius. It is so <laughs> easy. Wrestling is so easy, as hopefully you'll see from what's to follow. So instead of interrupting Randy Orton and immediately putting Keith Lee in the middle of a program that is currently bigger than him and guaranteeing that he'll be seen as an afterthought on his very first night, you know, as it did with him lying in the ring while Randy and Drew fought on the outside, we start with a Keith Lee match. Because ultimately that's the biggest string in his bow. He's charismatic, he looks great, he can talk, but top of the tree, the man can Wrestle. go. And demonstrate Wrestle. that with an exhibition squash against Cedric Alexander, who also has Ricochet in his corner. Cedric and Ricochet were teaming up <laughs> at the time, and Alexander's a magic first opponent for Lee, someone he can throw around, just get to f but also someone fast that you can use to make the visual mm -hmm. comparison. Oh, wow, Keith Lee can be as fast as Cedric. Keith wins, takes up the microphone. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Keith Lee. You might remember me from when I came this close to snatching victory for Team NXT. It's a and I like that. Callbacks. People are, oh, I remember that guy. That's how you do it. That's a good way to introduce somebody that maybe some of the casual fans may not know who is, who don't watch NXT. Survivor Series. You might remember me from when I knocked Brock Lesnar flat at the Royal Rumble. Or you might remember me to be the first man to hold the North American and NXT championships at the same time. And speaking of NXT, when I was wrestling for the black and gold, I beat everyone there was to beat. Johnny Gargano, Adam Cole, mm. Finn Balor, but like shit's passing in the night, I never got to wrestle you. Pointing at Ricochet. You and I, we come from a lot of the same places. We've only wrestled one-on-one -on -one once. That was in WCPW, by the way. And you beat me. That won't stand. So how about it, one and only? How about you and I, one more time, for real, I get my payback and you get to bask in my glory. I like that. It, it, it gives Ricochet something to do. I like that. Sign me up. That what the hell? It gives Ricochet, Team Captain North America himself. If you know the reference, you know why we call him that, then you know. You've been following us on the Intercuts page. Think it gives him something to do. Ah, uh, not only are you helping Ricochet get in some type of important feud, you're getting over Keith Lee. Put this man on the payroll, bro. Payback, give Keith Lee and Ricochet 15 minutes to go. Trust me, from personal experience, it works. Keith Lee snatches Ricochet out of the air for a spirit bomb. One, two, three. Keith Lee wins after the bell. Both men shake hands as a sign of mutual respect and in memories of NXT's past. But it's not just said Ricochet being high flyers to showcase Lee's power that makes him ideal first opponent. It's also because both men were embroiled with the hurt business that makes them pivotal into mm. taking Keith Lee and pointing him at his first major feud, mm. Bobby 
That's Lastly, good. beef on beef. That really hurt. <laughs> hurt business victimized Cedric and Ricochet on Raw, prompting Keith Lee, who now respects the hell out of both competitors, to come out and make the save, leading to Clash of Champions. Keith Lee versus Bobby Lashley for the United States Championship. Two monstrous cowmen who can move with ramming speed. <laughs> Two men who just run. Ow, why do I keep doing it? Into each other super, super hard. Spear each other through barricades. Lashley runs at Keith, who snatches him and that plants a, him through the announce table. That would be a great However, match to see. at Clash of Champions, Cedric Alexander turns heel, joins the Hurt Business, and costs Keith Lee his shot at Lashley's title. And actually, this way, the Alexander heel turn makes a little bit more sense. Thought we were friends, Ricochet, but as soon as your friend from NXT turns up, you could give a shit about me. I'm going to try my luck with someone who actually knows my worth. Give me a solid gold suit. The Hurt Business injure Ricochet. Bobby Lashley stamps on a chair around his neck, leaving Keith Lee to go up against the entire Hurt Business alone. Him and Lashley have a rematch booked for the next pay-per-view in order to keep out MVP Shelton. Cedric, it's Keith Lee versus Bobby Lashley. Hell. Oh, they going straight hell in the cell. Hoss wrestlers, Hoss stipulation. Keith Lee is important and should be treated as such. Lee and Lashley are in the cell instead of Roman and Jey Uso because it didn't need to be a cell match that. It was very good, but it was, it was. literally also an I quit match so it can just be yeah. an I quit match. Wrestling, it, God, it's really not that hard. At Hell in the <laughs> Cell, both Keith Lee and Bobby Lashley smash the cell apart, bust one of the cell walls down, getting out of the cell, bust a different wall down, getting back into the cell. Keith Lee just throws Cedric Alexander into the rest of the Hurt Business, counters a spear, popping up Lashley for a spirit bomb. One, two, three. Mm. Keith Lee wins the US title. Okay. Hockey Star has a few big matches with complementary opponents and wins a secondary title early on. I know, I'm a booking genius. Maverick <laughs> thinking, who could have ever thought this was a good idea. Because Keith Lee is US champion, that like leads that. us to Survivor Series. I like that. Keith Lee being a US champ automatically gives that title a little bit more power, like a little bit more like relevancy to it because got a new guy, people are getting behind him, they're pushing him. He has a US champ, on, you know, US championship on his shoulders. It's nice. I like that. I do enjoy, uh, I'm liking this booking so far, which I expected and Keith Lee versus Intercontinental Champion Sami Zayn and Hot Christmas. Just imagine if that happened to the takeover. Wouldn't that be a bunch of fucking sprinkles? Also, mm -hmm. this way, this match is face versus heel. Mm -hmm. Not heel versus heel, Bobby versus Sami. And also this way, it's Keith fucking Lee versus Sami fucking Zayn. Yeah. Wrestling's easy, lad. Keith wins that match, by the way. And after Survivor Series, Keith Lee shifts his focus to, and I cannot believe I'm saying this, Retribution. No, you come back. No, you come back. I have a reason for this, I promise. <laughs> Carrying on Keith Lee's character work from his debut, this kind of NXT redeemer who comes in and restores people to how good they were on the black and gold, and also this image of him as an unstoppable force who can tear through a faction and battering the big bully piss out of them. He goes after Retribution because he's going on a rescue mission. He interrupts one of their incomprehensible promos oh and targets gosh. first, of course, Mia Yim. Uh. Sorry, Reckoning. He tells her, I wanted this, all of this, being here in this ring on this stage, I wanted that for us more than I've wanted anything in my entire life. But I like not that. Like this. This isn't you. You're I like that, man. It's simple. They're in a real life relationship. It makes sense. Bring some realism into the story. Simple. It, I, <laughs> You're not reckoning. You're Mia Yim, the woman I fell in love with. Please, I, like I don't know what Ali has promised you, but this isn't the way. We'll I work it out together. I love this. Please, if you just take my hand. Reckoning looks like she's going to take Keith Lee's hand. And T-Bar stands in the way. Lee turns to T-Bar, and this is very soap opera, and I, I'm enjoying it. I don't know if you are. <laughs> says, you're not T-Bar. What the hell is a T-Bar? You're one of my closest friends. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring you home the only way I know how, by fighting you and bringing out your very best. The former Dominic Dijakovic uh -huh. rebuffs Lee, saying, the man you knew is dead. All of us got sick and tired of waiting down there, sick and tired of watching like chosen it. ones like you. I love, pass up. Uh, this is good. This is really, 
it bring it blurs the lines of realism storyline together. It's believable. I mean, we knew who these people were in NXT. They get repackaged into some fucking Bane rejects, and we're supposed to buy into that? No! As by, just like you've done all my life. I'm sick and tired of not getting the respect I deserve. So, I guess you could say, desperate times called for desperate measures. Lee tries to talk T-Bar around, telling him that the staff rally doesn't care about him. He just wants faceless goons that he can use to push WWE around. Ali is a bitter man with a chip on his shoulder. I mean, look at you, Dominic, because that's your name, Dominic. This is the price you pay for making a name for yourself on the big stage. He hasn't even allowed you your own name. He hasn't allowed you your own face. And Lee just rips the mask from T-Bar, revealing the man, Dominic Dijakovic, underneath. You want to make a name for yourself? Then beat me for this US title at TLC. Retribution swarm Keith Lee, beaten down, and Ali accepts on T-Bar's behalf on the provision that if T-Bar beats Lee, Ali will be crowned US champion. Get a proper cult mentality mm -hmm. behind Retribution. Actually give the whole masks and stupid names thing some actual reason for being. So at TLC, get Keith Lee and Dominic Dijakovic to do one of their matches because you know they can. They can That's go. one of the reasons you hired both men. They can oh, wrestle. you guys know how to put together a signature match that everyone loves. Oh, that's cool. We'll build to it, let you do it on the biggest stage we've got in order to make fans happy and make them want to watch more of our show. Simple, because, simple, you know, simple. Wrestling's fing easy for the love of f Lee wrestles T Bar at TLC. Halfway through the match, rips off his mask again, which makes Dijakovic go Super Saiyan. At one point, the referee goes down, reckoning enters the ring with the US title belt. Looks like she might hit Keith Lee with it, but she can't do it. She drops it, leaves the ring, Lee beats T-Bar, but even in the loss, gives him instantly more credibility than he had under the mask. So Dom mm -hmm. drops the mask, Reckoning takes off hers, becomes Mia Yim again, and she embraces Lee in the middle of the ring. Teams up with Keith Lee and Dominic Dijakovic to help take down the rest of Retribution. On Raw, Retribution interfere to cost Keith Lee the US Championship against Riddle, leading to the Royal Rumble. Keith Lee, Dominic Dijakovic, and Mia Yim versus Ali, Mace, and Slapjack. Mm. The good guys win, and the last members of Retribution turn on Ali, at least having the chance to do so on a main pay per view stage instead of the pre show to. I can't even, fast lane, <laughs> was it fast lane? This takes us to Elimination Chamber where there's a few changes. Drew defends the belt against Sheamus one-on-one -on -one instead of inside the chamber. Instead, the Raw Elimination Chamber match is to determine the number one contender to the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. Guess who wins that? Hey, if you guess Keith Lee, you did it. You picked the option that makes the I most like sense. Yeah. At WrestleMania 37, Woo! you get Keith Lee versus Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship. Drew. That's a good main event. That's a fucking. You can't tell me that's not a, a worthy main event if they booked him correctly, booked him strong, been in some interesting storylines. It's a good bait event to me. Goes for the Claymore. Keith Lee snatches him, catches him in midair. Spirit bomb. One, two, three. Keith Lee becomes WWE champion. But what about Bobby Lashley? I hear you cry. Well, The Miz doesn't cash in at Elimination Chamber, so Bobby's not champion yet. Instead, Keith Lee goes on a tear with the belt. He defends it at Backlash against Drew in a rematch, then goes on to Hell in a Cell, where he defends it in a four-way. All right, I'm back. Braun Strowman, beefy boys, all the rage, the beefy, beefy boys. boys in a cage. <laughs> Instead, it's at Money in the Bank, literally the last possible moment that Miz can cash in before he loses the briefcase forever. And then he does it. Lee wrestles Braun Strowman. He beats Braun before Lashley comes down, spears Keith Lee, etc., mm. so that the Miz can cash in. Lashley then beats Miz for the belt, leading to a SummerSlam. Keith Lee versus Bobby Lashley. Mm one last time, circling back to Keith Lee's first major feud on the main roster. Lashley won the first match at Clash of Champions. Keith Lee won the second one at the first Hell in the Cell. This one is the decider, and it's won by Lashley. Because mm. yeah, Keith Lee doesn't need to win all the time to be a huge deal. He just has to be treated like one. Mm, and like literally, that. that's it. <laughs> 
that's this video. I know, right? There's, no, there's nothing mind-boggling in here. Just stuff that, I like that serves the character, the character's past. I like he didn't go on uh, having Keith Lee regain it again. I like that because it, you give Bobby Lashley that run because he needs that run himself as well. So I like that. That was cool. Big matches, big wins. I just, how'd you, how you screw up Keith Lee? Don't blame COVID. They had months of him Thank not you. having COVID. To, Thank you. To, then they f***ed him up. And you know what? After all of this, I thought doing this booking and just like having a nice little alternate glimpse into the life that Keith Lee could have had if he'd just been treated like Keith Lee, I thought it made me feel better. It's just made me feel worse. I can't believe he's gone. God, he's going to do such great work elsewhere, but... Anyway, that's subscribe. Thank you. Um, oh, <laughs> bloody hell, hammer. There's a hammer on the wall. Anyway, but. <laughs> hey, man, I understand his pain and frustration. People like to make an excuse. He had COVID. Doesn't matter. When he didn't have COVID, they still wasn't booking him correctly. They still wasn't giving him the momentum that he needed to be the Keith Lee we know him to be. Simple as that. That's all I got to say on that. But, hey. I enjoyed this video. This was hella enjoyable, straight to the point. I loved it. Comment down below. Let me know if you guys agree with Adam's booking of Keith Lee. If, is there anything that you would have changed of his booking of Keith Lee? I enjoyed this. I thought this was cool. I And the soap opera stuff, I get it. Retribution was a, a horrible mess. But it's the best storyline they could possibly come up with with retribution in keith lee since there's some real life like stuff going on you know what i'm saying with him dating mia yim and him having this this amazing robbery with in nxt with uh with dajakovic it, it would have made sense could have brought them into the fold and it would have been somewhat of an entertaining story because there's some real life elements to it. So I like that. You know, it, it is a little soap opera, soap opera ish, but I still enjoyed that than what WWE has given us with Retribution in the past. So comment down below. Let me know. Appreciate all love and support. Road to 70K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.